Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today we're going to be going back to the $5 Windows 98 PC as you can see right here. This was a computer that, yes I got this for $5 at one of my local thrift stores almost a year ago actually. Uh, I picked this up in July 2016 and it is May 2017 right now. So um, yeah in like a couple of months so it's like I don't know what 10 months ago. Nine, nine or ten months ago, I think it was towards the end uh, of July is uh, one that I picked this up. So it's been definitely a, a while since we've seen this PC, and I've done you know a couple of different videos on this machine, but I kind of got the idea today of going back to it and seeing how far we can push this machine, at least Windows version wise. Right now it is running, um, as I said, this is the $5 Windows 98 PC. So it is running Windows 98. Uh, it might even be running Windows 98 SC. Uh, I, I don't remember which um, version that it is running. I think it might be SC, but um, I kind of got the idea of seeing how uh, recent of a Windows version that we can get onto this thing. Um, so we're going to kind of be going through and upgrading this to Windows ME and Windows XP. We might get to Windows Vista, and if we get to Windows Vista, that would be a you know huge surprise. Um, and we might even get to Windows 7. I, I, I know for sure we're going to be able to get to Windows XP. Um, it's just Windows Vista, it's going to be really uh, interesting to see if we can get this PC to Windows Vista. I've seen videos online. Um, and I've seen a lot of forum posts of people just, you know, for like for the fun of it, they've gotten, you know, like their old computer and they've installed like Windows 7 on it, like on a 400 megahertz PC, which is something that, you know, you is totally un, like unusable and something that uh, you, you definitely would not, you know, want to be using as your main computer. But that's kind of like the, or the, I guess, inspiration uh, for this video. And we're, we're going to be seeing if we can do that here. So to make this a little bit easier, we are going to be using the all-in-one Windows DVDs, which I did a video on uh, a couple of months ago. And if you're uh, interested in that, basically it's one CD or actually two CD images that has like every version of Windows up to Windows XP on it. So that's going to make it you know, a little bit easier uh, to install Windows ME and Windows XP. But to do that and to install Windows Vista and Windows 7, definitely, we're going to need to install a DVD drive in this machine. Because right now it only has a CD drive. I don't believe Windows 7, um, Windows Vista might fit on a CD. I know Windows 7, I think it only comes on a DVD. So uh, we're going to have to install this drive in this machine first. Um, so that's going to be our first task. Um, then after that, I'm going to burn uh, a couple of DVDs as this machine, I am 100% sure, does not support uh, any type of USB booting as it is uh, from the year 2000. So, um, yeah, so let's just get started with that. We're going to open this thing up, install uh, this DVD ROM drive, and go from there. All right, so this should be a pretty simple upgrade right here. I've got my iFixit toolkit, which is... Um, what I always like to use um, in these type of upgrades or, or like really when I'm working on you know anything and this is uh, the older 54-bit driver kit so it doesn't have uh, all of the drivers in it but we're only gonna need a standard Phillips head for this um, which is really no big deal but uh, I really do like the the uh, ProTech toolkit it does a really nice job um, of you know being able to get into any sort of uh, computer or a uh, basically any like uh, electronic device so all right so we've got all the screws out thanks to my iFixit uh, Protect toolkit and this is one of those uh, cases where you just got to kind of slide uh, the back off like that and the whole uh, like side panels and the top are, are, are all um, attached and it's you know pretty nice and this is a, a nice little like very compact PC which is one of the things that I said when I got this thing. I'm gonna kind of set it down here because the camera is like right here. Um, so we are trying to get right here to the CD uh, drive. And I do want to check, I'm sure that the connections are gonna be perfectly fine on this thing. I do also have to apologize as this new chair I have is very loud, it's very squeaky, it likes to make a lot of noise. So 
um, I'm not really used to that in these videos uh, as it's just kind of been bothering me while I've been trying to do this. So, okay, so I managed to get those four screws out. It was definitely, and one of the things that, you know, I, I just kind of said how much like that I love this little, where's this screwdriver at? Here it is. I just said like how like, you know, great that this thing is. And the major problem that I have with this thing is that it's not, it's a very thin screwdriver and you have to apply a ton of force to get like full size uh, Phillip heads uh, screws out. And it's very annoying if you're trying to work on like a full size computer as it's definitely made for like smaller devices like phones and tablets and that sort of thing. Um, I also had to, because my chair, I just got uh, this, you know, brand new chair a while ago, and I haven't really made an off-camera video in a while, and so I wasn't used to the loud, really loud noise it was making, it was ridiculous, um, so I just had to, uh, just, just had to, you know, take that and stop sitting in it, so let's, um, I guess we gotta push probably from this side here, so let's like, or does it slide out? Does it slide out? Yeah, okay. So, you can see how large <laughs> that this thing is uh, compared to this DVD driver right here. Uh, it's, actually, it's not really that, not that much larger. Um, so, yeah, we're just gonna slide this thing in here. Um, this DVD round drive, which is gonna be a pain. Uh, it doesn't wanna slide in for some reason. Um, so let's, Okay, come on. You can do it. Come on, why is it not... Is a, let's try it from the other side. Nope. Okay, I'm obviously doing something wrong. It's hitting against something in there, and I can't tell what it is. Let's try to put this one back in. See if it's just the... Okay, yeah, it's just the bay. you got to do something probably that I'm... Totally missing. You probably just got to use a good amount of force or something. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's uh, return around back here. Let's uh, turn this, flip this down so you can see this. I know I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, try I'm trying to keep this to where everything is in focus on the camera so that you can clearly see what I'm doing as I have the horrible habit of like, just like I'll be working on some over here and like it'll be right here and you can't see anything so I'm trying to be very conscientious of that um, let's slide this back into place I'm not even gonna bother to put the screws back in because I'm probably just gonna put this back in when we're done with it um, because I kinda like how it looks um, you know like this just looks kinda weird like it's you know like a white computer with a black uh, drive uh, this, you know, definitely fits this computer a lot better and definitely, uh, you know, from this time period, but definitely, you know, just for this project, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that in there. Um, there's probably not even really a need to put this back on, you know, we'll just leave this like this, you know, in case that we, you know, have to get back in here uh, for, I don't know, something. Maybe we'll have to, like, put more RAM in it. I'm not even sure how much RAM that this thing has. So, um... Next thing I'm going to do, hook this thing up to this monitor right over here, which you guys have seen a lot of this. This is that same uh, Dell monitor that I use in pretty much all my off-camera videos. I mean, not, not off-screen capture videos is uh, what I meant to say before. Um, and I'm going to burn uh, a couple of different DVDs so we can get started with this. So um, I'll be back after that. All right, so we're back here. As you can see, we're booting up Windows 98. Um, and I have have burned the, um, and sorry for the blurriness here, it'll just do that when the uh, screen goes black. Um, and you, you know, you see it'll uh, go away here when it turns back on. But I have burned the first all-in-one Windows ISO to this DVD right here. And I had to do this, I thought that the ME um, ISO was on the same uh, disc as XP and all of that. But it was actually on a whole separate one with the rest of the Windows 9X. So, um, yeah, we'll just accept these time settings. So, hopefully, uh, 
this is going to have recognized our new DVD ROM drive. So if we go into start here, and it's still a little bit screwed up on, on this, I think that's just the way this monitor is laid out. But we should be able to open this, and we should have, okay, good. So we've got our D drive in there. So we were able to do that. Uh, it still says CD-ROM disk, but uh, let's just try to put in, um, let's just try to put in our DVD and see what happens. Might need to install a driver for this, uh, but I'm hoping it just works. <laughs> But you know how that is. Oh, would you look at that. It, did it find it? It found it. Look at that. That is awesome. Okay, so here is the um, Windows, all-in-one Windows DVD installation menu in uh, like 16 color mode because there's no video driver installed on this uh, Windows 98 installation. Actually, I want to check... Um, I type in the dark here so I can bear I type Wim. Uh Winver, there we go. Uh Windows 98. Well that's helpful. Uh DX Diag. Yeah, DX Diag. Is this gonna show me what um build two two okay, what build is that? I wanna I'm interested in seeing but here's our specs right here. We got a Pentium 2 MMX 190 megs of RAM and um, that Pentium 2 MMX, I believe, is running at like 400 megahertz, 422 megahertz, around, you know, in that ballpark. So it's going to really limit us, um, you know, onto, onto like what, uh, like what we're going to actually be able to install. Um, but I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, <laughs> that we'll be able to install Windows Vista on 190 megabytes of RAM. And we'll see what happens. But anyway, I want to check out. So Windows... I'm looking this up on my phone here because this PC does not have any uh, wireless at all. So build, I believe this is 2222. I believe this is the second edition. Second edition, yep. 4102222. So this is Windows 98 SC right now. So good thing we figured that out. So we're going to go into Windows ME is what we're going to install. I was thinking of going the Windows 2000 route and then upgrade to Windows XP, but I kind of decided against that because this is a home computer and, you know, you would install Windows ME on it, uh, you know, as opposed to Windows 2000. And we're going to probably install the, the, the uh, home version of Windows uh, XP. So let's go and we're going to do a Windows Millennium upgrade. And it's just going to go through that whole process right here. It's going to check drive C. And this is actually probably going to take 30 to 60 minutes because we are actually running this on real hardware. This is a Pentium 2 uh, with 128 megs of RAM or, you know, uh, whatever RAM that it had. It, it was around 120. I think it was 128. So this is actually, this is probably going to take around 30 minutes to an hour to install, maybe even more than that. Um, so... This is going to be a lot of cutting in this editing process, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, going through and taking out this uh, unnecessary um, uh, stuff. And the good thing about this is this the hard drive in here, I believe, because I, I put the hard drive in here because there was no hard drive. Um, it's like a 40 gig hard drive. So when we get into, if we even get into Windows 7 and Windows Vista, which I highly doubt at this point because I did not realize it had that low uh, amount of RAM, um, we're, we're, we would be fine uh, with hard drive space-wise. So, it's asking for a Windows ME key here. I'm going to have to go and grab that really quick. Okay, so, something has to not work, right? Well, it was really surprising what, um, what that actually was. So, the DVD drive worked, right? Um, it loaded the ME CD ROM and everything great. I clicked on Windows ME upgrade and I'm just going to do this again for you. When it asked me to put in the product key, the product key that I had didn't work. So I figured, okay, you, you know, maybe this is just like a bad product key. So I, I go through basically every Windows ME product key that I have. Uh, including the ones that I put in the video description of my Windows ME tutorial video that I know work, 
because I used them in that video and it didn't work. So I'm really confused here. I'm assuming this has something to do with the fact that this is the all-in-one Windows DVD, so something must have been done when these files were like copied over. But I tried basically everything, um, like e every key that I had uh, and every key that I could find, I, I, I put in here and, and it wouldn't activate. I, I even tried doing this because I figured, you know, since this is like an all-in-one Windows DVD that was made a couple years after Windows ME was released, maybe it would be cracked. So I tried that and it, it doesn't work, obviously. I, I tried putting in like just a bunch of zeros and that doesn't work. So I, 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 I just don't know. It doesn't let me click on next. So you have to put in a product key. So what I've done is I have burned yet another DVD and I have a feeling that by the end of this video, I'm gonna go through like this whole tower of DVDs that I have here. Um, but I've burned an, uh, another DVD with just Windows ME on it, with the Windows ME upgrade, and I have a key for that that I know works because I used it in uh, I, uh, one of my, I think it was the um, uh, massive Windows upgrade video. I, I used this ISO in that video with the key and it worked fine. So I know that this key works and if it doesn't, then we're just not gonna use Windows ME, we're gonna use something else. I don't know why it wouldn't work. But, so that's really weird. Um, maybe Windows ME just doesn't really uh, like being on the all-in-one Windows DVD with with keys. I have no idea. So, um, I'm going to get out of my very squeaky and annoying chair and reach over here and um, put in this DVD here. Um, so, we're going to swap these out. I probably should label these because I'm going to have like a bunch of DVDs by the end of this video that I don't know what's on them. So let me just label this right now as All Windows DVD 2. So I've got that labeled. And now I'll have a Windows ME DVD in case I need like something uh, like, you know, in case that I need one of those, which is probably going to be very rare. But uh, anyway, so so we get this uh, you know, standard upgrade message, this CD-ROM contains a newer version of Windows than the one you are presently using. We're going to click yes to upgrade and we're going to go through the same set of process and we're going to, uh, I'm going to find the key that I have open here. And would you look at that? It works. So I have no idea. And there were three different, um, types of, or not three different types, but three different, uh, yeah, I, I guess three different types of, uh, Windows ME, I guess versions on that all-in-one Windows DVD. There was uh, the upgrade, the step-up version, and the regular retail copy. All of them, when I tried this key and all the other key, I have tried about like 20 keys. They all didn't work, so I have no idea like why that happened. So this is going to work here, and the nice thing about this is it's going to do a full upgrade. So it's going to save, as you can see right here, it'll save our existing Windows system files and so actually if we wanted to we could uninstall Windows ME and turn uh, or, or you know, turn back to Windows 98 if we wanted to which we're not going to do but uh, just for the heck of it we're going to click on yes or you know select yes um, to save our existing files it's only going to take 178 megabytes on this 40 gig hard drive I'm actually not even sure if uh, Windows 98 is uh, utilizing the full 40 gigs uh, of hard drive space that that, the, um, that this has. Uh, the plan is to get Windows ME installed. Uh, we'll take a look at Windows XP and see if, which I'm sure we'll be able to get that installed. And Windows Vista is going to be where the challenge starts because I don't think Windows Vista is is uh, going to like being on a uh, year 2000 era computer with like a 400 megahertz processor and 128 megs of RAM. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see uh, what we can do to get install in here. But for now, I'm just going to cut the video here and uh, I, I will come back uh, once we are finished with the Windows ME installation. All right, so I think it's just about time to burn another DVD. This time we're gonna burn the uh, the first or second, I don't know, I, I burned the, the, the second um, all-in-one Windows DVD image first. So now I'm gonna do the first one. So let me just go in here uh, we're going to go and burn the first one here. So we'll get that going. In the meantime here, you can see Windows ME has finished installing. And 
it's come up with this nice little welcome to Windows ME just like video thing uh, and we already have uh, an error which is great you know which is gonna be a lot more to come because we this is of course Windows ME um, so it's trying to play a video I assume over uh, the internet and because that or actually no so I have no idea why that error came up if um, yeah it's, it's just playing this um, this is that same like uh, like you know sort of welcome uh, and tour let me actually fix the camera here it's a little bit a uh, little bit off there we go so it's just kind of like a little tour video kind of showing you all the things about Windows ME um, we're just gonna can we get out of this can we close this no do we have to really watch this I I can't control any of this I don't know why it's even here um, okay so let's just uh, let's just do this let's just uh, run task manager here so you can see that um, like the uh, start menu and everything opens up and you can see that also in uh, Windows 98 the whole issue with uh, the screen not being centered properly well you can see that it is now it works perfectly fine um, works great and it did keep all my uh, programs on here because I, I did do uh, one of the videos that, that I did on this machine was trying to get a wireless card to work and it kept all that software that I installed um, but yeah I can't really do anything I'm just gonna close out of this another thing you might notice is you can see that Windows ME just fixed the whole issue with uh, the 16 color it actually was able to install the proper drivers in here um, and let's see if we can go to true color and yeah so it's found our Intel uh, graphics controller so yeah we were on two sorry 256 color is uh, what we were no no I think we we were on 16 color before I think we were on that before um, and so yeah it's it, it's able to go up to 24 bit true color which is pretty nice um, so let's see oh, I don't want to go why did it change my uh, can we go up to 1280 by 102.4 we can but that's way too uh, I think this monitor is the optimal resolution is like yeah 1024 by 768 so uh, next we're just gonna I'm uh, waiting for this image to burn here it's about three quarters of the way done uh, and we're just gonna go in and move on to Windows XP hopefully we won't have the same issue before where um where like it wasn't um accepting any sort of product key i have no idea why that it was doing that it was really odd so we're gonna try that here we're gonna install windows xp home edition if not if this fails then i do have uh, a backup windows xp image and we're not even uh, going to be able to use the all-in-one windows dvds for um windows vista which at this point like i said i highly doubt highly highly doubt windows vista is going to be able to run on this hardware but you never know uh, I, I've seen it done before you know this very well could happen um, but I'm just gonna try to get this thing up to Windows XP um, and then probably when I'm done I'm gonna probably set it back to 98 because even on Windows XP this thing's probably gonna be pretty slow I I had Windows XP running on like a 400 megahertz uh, P P uh, PC back a, lo a long time ago I think when XP like was a couple years old and it ran incredibly slow uh, it's definitely not designed for that um so yeah I'm just gonna pause the video here I'm going to wait for this actually I don't even need to pause the video it's almost done so I'm just gonna eject this right now okay so I've got my Windows ME disk now that I have in case I ever need to install Windows ME you know that happens all the time I'm sure I mean uh, that's probably probably never gonna use that again but we're I'm waiting for the disk to finalize here it just popped out um, and let's uh, let's put it into the 98 machine right here or to the now ME machine soon to be XP machine um, so let's uh, yeah, I I was really really glad that this DVD uh, upgrade worked. That was that was really nice. So, 
makes this whole thing a lot easier than having to burn like seven different CD images. So here we are. This already looks a lot nicer than it did before because of course it was in like 16 color. So we're going to jump uh, right to Windows XP and it's it should ask us to install XP. You see we've got all these different options here. Um, we're going to do XP Home Retail and if that doesn't work we'll try Home OEM. Uh, so let's just do that. And this is going to be the, I believe this is going to be the first uh, upgrade, like the first, um, not the first upgrade, the like Windows XP without a service pack, like the RTM version. Uh, so let's just do that here. And there is no like, I don't think with Windows XP there's an upgrade and a full uh, version. I think it, I think it asks you uh, if you want to keep your Windows files, I'm not sure. But since we're running it from within Windows, it should just, it should figure that out. Okay, yeah, so here we go. So we can choose between upgrade and new installation. So we're just going to do uh, the upgrade to make this a whole lot easier. We're going to accept the licensing agreement and we're going to enter our key. So I've got a key right here for Windows XP. And let's just try it out. Let's see if this works. If this doesn't work and if we have the same problem, then I assume that this, uh, um, uh, that this CD is just not meant to, uh, to work with product keys. Okay, so that worked. So something with the Windows ME installation is, I guess, just sh uh, screwed up on this all-in-one DVD. So keep that in mind. If you're having problems with trying to install Windows ME from these uh, discs and it doesn't work, um, then, you know, there you go. That's, that's why. So we've got this upgrade report here. So, saying that there are some programs that may not work. So, we'll see. Let's just show the full report. Let's just see what this is. Let's see what what uh, isn't, isn't going to work. And, no, we're not going to be able to download the setup files because uh, we don't have any network connection. And it's going to prepare the installation. And that's pretty much it uh, for right now. You can see setup will complete in 73 minutes. Um, that is definitely going to be a while, so I am going to just let this uh, finish up here, and uh, I'll, I'll be back. Um, I, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll just be back once in probably in about 73 minutes once this is finished up. All right, so we are back. It's been about I don't know two or three hours since I started this, and I actually left for a couple hours, and I figured. You know, because it, it was going to take about 53 minutes, so I figured when I came back, this would be all uh, finished with the setup process, and we could uh, move on to attempting to install Windows Vista. But it, it actually um, gave me this error right here, a uh, file copy error. The system cannot read from a specified device. Um, I don't know. It was trying to read from, from the hard drive. I don't really know what happened. So we're just going to let's see if we can retry it. I don't know, maybe like the like the hard drive spun down because it was inactive or something and like Windows tried to shut it off. I don't know. Um, but oh, it is uh, it seems to be continuing. So I guess it's going to take 53 more minutes. This is th this is taking way longer. Um, I, I think Windows XP um, but yeah, you, you know, you, you can see that it's going here. It's uh, resuming and everything so it seems to be working fine I think Windows XP is going to install uh, perfectly fine um, hopefully it won't do any more stuff like you know like this because I do want to get this installed um, Windows Vista though that's going to be pretty interesting I, I highly doubt that that's going to work but um, again so yeah I'm just going to I'm just going to pause this right here uh, and I will come back hopefully in 53 minutes without uh, any other errors. All right, so we are back, and as you can see, we're still at the Windows ME desktop here. So what happened? Well, we're having a couple problems with uh, the Windows XP setup. That error that I showed you in the previous clip was still happening where it was not wanting uh, to copy certain files over from the DVD, and I read online that that is a common problem with uh, cracked Windows DVDs, which that whole thing is. So, I, I that, you know, this this is my first time actually 
uh, using the all-in-one Windows DVDs, um, but so far they haven't really been uh, that reliable. You know, we've uh, Windows ME wasn't accepting any product keys, and Windows XP accepted a key, but it just decided to not want to install. So I'm going back once again uh, to using uh, genuine installation media. So we have a Windows XP Service Pack 1 reinstallation DVD right here. Um, and we're going to try this on this computer and uh, see if this works. This, I don't believe this has an upgrade. Uh, it, it might, but we're going to just check it out and see. So I'm going to put this thing um, in the uh, DVD drive. And we have to install XP Home Edition because I'm going to be upgrading to Vista, um, or again, if Vista even wants to upgrade. Uh, the version that I, I'm going to be using is I, I think I have a copy of Vista Home Basic, so um, we need to have XP Home for that. But again, we're still trying to get XP on this thing right now. We're not even like, I shouldn't even be worried about Vista. Um, because again, I highly doubt that, uh, that, that you know, th that's going to work. But um, so we're going to load this up here. And this should be pretty simple. We're going to install Windows XP and I, as I said, I don't think this is going to have an uh, upgrade option because this actually, uh, or this um, was a reinstallation OEM disk that was uh, shipped with a Dell computer um, for the sole purpose of if you like reformatted uh, your hard drive, um, you could, or, or this is the way that you could uh, reinstall Windows. So you can see here. Installation type, new installation, yep, that's the only one on here. So we're going to just have to format this drive, which isn't really a huge deal. There's you know nothing on it. It's not really that big of a deal. And it is going to ask us for a key this time. Okay, so we're going to go through and see what our advanced options are. So we're going to copy files from there, okay. Uh, we're going to do English United States, obviously. We're not going to download any setup files. And this is where it got stuck before. It would be stuck at this preparing installation and it wouldn't want to Kirby uh, copy certain files uh, over from the DVD and this little bar down here uh, kept getting stuck. Like it, it, it would keep uh, freezing on like a certain dot. Um, so we'll see if this gets past 53 minutes, which I'm hoping it does. And so we're gonna obviously it's gonna reformat uh, the you know whole drive and everything, and this will probably help us out too because I think that you need to have um, SP2 installed uh, before you can install Vista. So that's gonna save us some some time as well. Again, I'm getting way ahead of myself because I'm not even sure if XP is going to install properly, um, but uh, I have hopes. We'll see what happens. Uh, so I'm gonna pause the video here for a little bit and hopefully uh, I'll come back in about an hour probably uh, when this is finished up. Alright so we are back it has been a little over a day since uh, the last clip took place um, but I was finally able to install Windows XP Home Edition on this machine and I'm just going to uh, boot it up right here so I'm just going to reach over and turn the machine on. So yeah, you can see right here, Windows XP Home Edition. Um, I was able to get it on here, and this is, um, I, I thought, I don't know if I said in the last clip if this came with Service Pack 2, um, but this is only Service Pack 1, uh, which isn't that huge of a deal. Uh, the only thing is is that now, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to uh, pro probably install Service Pack 2 if we want to install Windows Vista, which I'm going to be trying to do here very shortly. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens um, when I when I do that. But I just want to show you here uh, if we go into uh, my computer and, and properties, it should show us the specifications of this, um, which is an Intel Celeron processor. Let me just zoom into that right here. Uh, Intel Celeron processor, 432 megahertz, 192 megabytes of RAM. So far, it's been running actually pretty, you know, pretty snappy for, uh, you know, these uh, specifications right here. So yeah, this is Service Pack One version 2002, as you can see here. Um, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Uh, one of the things I did want to do is go in and see how large the so yeah this is a okay it's a 80 gig hard drive okay so i totally under i thought i put a 40 gig drive in here 
Um, but yeah, you can see right there, we're only using a little under two gigs, and we've got about 80 free, you know, just just under uh, 75 gigabytes right there uh, of of the full hard drive capacity. So, um, yeah, this is a a pretty big hard drive. It's we're probably not ever going to use that much space on here. Um, so let's just um, eject this drive or, or this uh, disk right here. Um, and we're going to move on to installing Windows Vista. And for this, I actually do have a fully legitimate copy of an Express upgrade to Windows Vista. This was actually, this copy came with a uh, gateway PC, actually. No, it was an eMachines PC, I, I think. Um, you know, uh, one of the two, they're both owned by the same company. It came with one of those Windows Vista cap uh, capable machines. And this is uh, the Windows Vista free upgrade that you get. This, this will actually upgrade you to Windows XP Home Edition. And, you know, if this, this PC that we're installing this on right now is a gateway PC. And if you look on the back here, I'm just going to cover up the serial number. This is meant to run on specifically a gateway or an eMachines computer. So it should work, right? I mean, I mean it says it should. Uh, I mean, it says right here, support for these products provided by Gateway and eMachines. Software contains 32-bit software only for use only as an uh, as an upgrade to a qualifying Gateway slash eMachines PC. So, I don't know, I mean, would you consider this a, uh, like, qualified Gateway PC? I don't know, but we're gonna try it and, and see if it works. So yeah, Windows Vista Home Premium Express upgrade. Uh, let's get started with that. So I'm going to take out the Windows XP disk and we're going to see what happens. I'm a thousand percent sure it's going to ask us to install Service Pack 2. I'd be really surprised if it doesn't. Because um, I think you need, I think you might even need Service Pack 3. Um, but let's, let's, let's see here, see what happens. So it's found our DVD right there. Just going to uh, run that. Currently, we've got 30 days left for activation. <laughs> um, and Windows Vista, you can see right there in all of its glory. Let's hit on install now and see what happens. I think if this, uh, or I mean, like this is definitely the uh, lowest end hardware or the oldest hardware that I've tried to install Windows Vista on. I don't think I've tried to install it on this old of a machine before. Um, I know I've tried to install it on like, you know, like, like Pentium 4, uh, like XP machines, which works perfectly fine. So it's, it's going to kick us out right then and there. Windows detected that this computer has 192 megabytes of RAM, but 512 megabytes is required for installation. Installation cannot proceed. So I think I might know a little bit of a workaround and we're gonna we're gonna try this out here. So we're gonna actually reboot and boot directly off of the Windows Vista CD and we're gonna see if this works. I think uh, this um, uh, th this method that I'm, I'm going to try may actually allow us to install Windows Vista on uh, like 192 megabytes of RAM, which is in and of itself pretty insane. But so we're gonna have to boot to the to the boot menu here when this comes up. Uh, so let's we want uh, tab. Um, I don't think was this the boot menu. Oh, cool. Well, it's going to ask us to do it anyway. So here we go. Windows is loading files. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to kind of get the camera in the best position, but it still kind of does this like annoying, like grainy effect when uh, the computer is at and like a, a uh, like black screen. And I think that's just the way that the lighting is in, in this room. I've tried to fix that by adding like uh, like you know, like extra lights and stuff to it. Um, and it's also going to do this annoying thing where it likes to autofocus. So we're going to manual focus and turn that off. So there we go. 
I don't know why it always likes to autofocus on the things that like it shouldn't autofocus on. So I actually found out about this method. This is a The Windows Club forum post. This was actually posted uh, in like 2008, which was, you know, a couple years after Vista came out. Um, and I have a feeling we're just going to have to format this drive again like we had to do with Windows XP. Um, because this Windows XP disk right here only allowed you to do a full installation. It did not allow you to do uh, an upgrade. So it's going to say, say it is encountering an unknown exception. So let's see if it'll get past that and go, because we, we got to get to a CMD. Um, it's just going to kick us out, and I think it's just going to kick us out and restart. Yep, it's just going to... Okay, that's great. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to try because I think this Windows DVD, um, this might only, like, this might only be for upgrading. Like, it might not have the uh, repair functionality added to it. So we might have to burn a whole separate DVD Again, as I said, this whole tower of DVDs that I have is going to be gone by the end of this video. Um, I think that we might have to to, to try that um, and and get like a non uh, express upgrade because this is probably this is probably not going to work. It's it's probably just not going to work. We'll we'll try it one more time here. If not, then I'm going to have to burn a Vista ISO uh, to a DVD and try it that way. Um, so that's another, <laughs> just another DVD. Um, so let's just let's just let it load up its stuff here. Oh, it might just be giving that error because the processor is so old uh, that it cannot run like the actual setup uh, program. Uh, but when we try to do it within Windows XP, it was just giving us the um, unsupported r or like you know not enough RAM. Uh, like it didn't meet the minimum requirements, so let's see. If, let's see if it can get past this again. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that this this upgrade is or, or this DVD is just meant for upgrade purposes, and it doesn't have like any of the like repair functionality on here because I think E Machines did provide like a separate disc with all of that, um, and I do believe the the upgrade for Windows Vista on here is like very like gateway slash e-machines themed like it is a totally different installer so um i guess forget that i mean that isn't gonna work so i guess this is only gonna work on a uh like compatible licensed pc whatever it said uh so we're gonna move on to trying one more method of getting windows vista on this computer and that is going to be, as I said, I'm going to uh, burn the Vista ISO that I have to a DVD, and we're going to go from there. So I will be right back. Another day, another DVD. Uh, so you can see we're here booting up Windows XP Home Edition again. Um, and yes, it is a whole other day later. Uh, I only had some time to record that last uh, little portion last night. But so yeah, Windows XP installed 100% okay. And... As I mentioned before uh, in the last clip, it's actually been pretty fast, especially, you know, considering that this is only a 400 megahertz processor and about 100 and I think under 128 megs of RAM uh, is what that this computer has. So I have burned a Windows Vista ISO to this uh, DVD right here. And actually, I don't know why that I booted it in, in, into Windows XP because the way that we have to actually do this is... Um, we have to boot from this DVD directly um, and try to do a couple of different methods to actually get around um, the hardware checking, which it will do um, when it uh, first attempts to run the installer, which we obviously don't want it to do because we know that the, the, uh, this computer, doesn't, uh, computer does not meet the minimum hardware requirements. But we're going to try to, uh, to do it anyway because, you know, that's kind of the whole point of this video um, so we're gonna let it boot up here and I think we're gonna have to I forget what the key is to get into the BIOS is um, 
Oh, okay. Well, I guess that wasn't a full restart. That's kind of weird. Maybe I hit log off by accident? I don't know. That was weird. Um, so, I think it should just actually prompt us to boot, because it was um, doing that before. It would just prompt us to boot from the, uh, uh, from the CD drive. So, yeah, right there. So we're going to press any key to boot. Now, uh, what it was doing last time on the Express Upgrade disk right here is it was giving a um, like an error when it was trying to run. Uh, I, I assume it was trying to open like uh, the setup program. And I'm thinking that might be because the only like this uh, CD right here or, or this DVD might not contain all of the um, like it might only contain the like upgrade part of it and we need to actually get into the maintenance or repair part um, of the Windows setup I'm trying to go in here and change the focus because I know it's gonna freak out on me there we go so manual focus and honestly if this uh, glitches out again or if it just you know doesn't work again then it's probably gonna be the end of this video because I'm I've been editing this video and it's close to 40 minutes long already so I'm kind of just gonna uh, end it here if, if, if this doesn't work um, we will see uh, what happens it kind of did the same whole sh uh, shebang before I guess where it came up with you know hourglass and then that error message came up I'm hoping it doesn't do that this time because I kind of kind of oh no there it is the exception unknown software exception occur the application and honestly I just assume I look up this this uh, error code online I couldn't really find much information about it let me just zoom in on it so you can see it couldn't really find much information about it but I assume uh, that this is um, that this error is because that this CPU in here which is again like an Intel Celeron uh, it probably does not uh, meet like the minimum uh, speed to even like really work properly with uh, like with this setup program. So I was able to get into a safe mode menu for the Windows setup and pick a, you know a couple different options here and I'm gonna just boot into safe mode with command prompt and see if it will even do that and because all we have to do is get to an actual command prompt to run this command but if the regular setup.exe program isn't running at all then I highly doubt that this is gonna work but I mean it's worth a try so we're it's just loading all of its core Windows files right now uh, and we shouldn't and if we can't even get to a Windows command prompt then that's this is obviously not gonna work so we're here at the same black screen uh, with the cursor in the center right there and okay well this is a little bit different so far and you know this is Vista this is not Windows XP you can see at the top there this is build 6000 uh, if I can focus in on there so yeah this is uh, the final build of Windows Vista but when I um, when I initially went through and it didn't oh no look at that it's gonna do the same thing setup.exe application error the exception unknown software exception occurred in the application so yeah that is probably just gonna wrap it up for this video here as I said I'm a hundred percent sure that this error is just you know being caused by the fact that this hardware is just too old Windows Vista was just never meant to be uh, run on this type of hardware this hardware is again from the year 2000 uh, and it's really designed to be a Windows 98 machine so don't take this video you know too seriously it's kind of just you know like a fun little experiment that I was you know kind of trying to do here I had a feeling that Windows Vista was not going to install on here especially when I realized that this thing only had 128 megs even less than that um, Windows Vista needs a minimum of 512 megabytes of RAM uh, to like that's the Microsoft set recommended minimum so um, yeah that's just gonna about wrap it up here for this video I hope you guys enjoyed um, our little Windows upgrade uh, saga I guess you know if you could even call it that I mean we only really went through two versions ME and Windows XP but we learned a couple of things from this video 
that the Windows All-in-One DVDs are not that reliable. Uh, you know, at least the ME and XP uh, you know versions on that DVD aren't. And if those two aren't good, I'm gonna assume that all the other ones aren't. Um, so I don't know. I mean, th this could open up like a whole new video opportunity of me taking uh, another look at those DVDs and seeing um, like if they actually work because. Uh, so far, I've had, you know, like those two major problems with them. I guess, you know, n not really major problems, but I mean, it it's just not really working the way that it should. And it's just not, you know, not really doing what it was designed to do. Um, so that's, you know, one of the cool things that I guess that we learned from this video. And we also learned that obviously Windows Vista cannot run on a 128 uh, megs, um, 400 uh, whatever megahertz processor machine that it's you know that I'm trying to put it on here so um yeah as I said that's just about going to wrap it up for this video I hope you guys enjoyed if you did definitely be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more uh, videos like this in the near future and as always I will see you guys in the next video